So I observed something kind of interesting about this lens. This is the new 35 f2. So I got a comment on the video I posted the other day about my initial thoughts on this lens. Uh, I got this comment from uh, I think I'm pronounced. Hopefully I'm pronouncing his name right. Wing Yip, and uh, apologize if I mispronounced that. He had kind of called out and. I'll have a link to my other video if you want to read the comment. I appreciate, uh, Wing, I uh, appreciate you calling this out because I hadn't even thought about it. And I hadn't even actually mounted this lens up on my X-Pro1. But what he had mentioned was the on the OVF on the X-Pro1, basically when you have this lens set up, so uh, if you have this lens set up here, there... And I'll show you guys some photos of this. But basically, the the OVF on the X Pro One shows you sort of there's a there's a setting in the menu where it's I think it's something about uh, parallax correction or something. And I'll, I'll mention in the annotation what exactly it's called in the menu. But basically, it instead of just having the normal square and the X X One Hundred S works the same way. It will have a, a secondary square that sort of deals with parallax error. And I actually always have it turned on on these two cameras because when you're focusing, you want to basically, you know, just imagine you have a square here in the central focus point. And then because of the parallax error, you actually have another square down here. So you basically need to focus in the middle. And it's, it's kind of hard to show you guys right here. But just sort of imagine the two boxes. And with all the lenses you'll have two you know I think with the 18 f2 they're really close together they're almost overlapping if you will like sort of like that because they're uh, the I, I don't know actually honestly I'm not really sure it's something to do with the wider angle my, my guess is you know if you think about a wide angle lens you will have uh, very a deep depth of field so basically even when you focus something closer the depth of field doesn't change that much so my guess is because of that in a sense, there's not as much of a parallax error to situation, whereas with a greater focal length, such as a 35 millimeter lens, or even a 56 for that matter, it's going to you know increase a lot more. But the weird thing is, both of these lenses are 35 millimeter lenses, and you'd think it would be the same. But what he pointed out, and I was able to confirm, and I'm going to post some photos of this to kind of discuss each one uh, in this video. But basically. With the the 35 f 1.4, you have sort of an expected difference between the like infinity focus point, so to speak, and that was my understanding. And you know, Wing was saying the same thing, but you have the infinity, which is like centered dead on, right? Because if you focus out to infinity, basically it's not going to move from there. And then you have like sort of the closest focus distance, but I don't even know if it's necessarily like the minimal focus distance, but it's a closer focus distance. What I've found is you sort of place your subject, so say I wanted to focus right here, you would kind of align the focus points to have the infinity one sort of pass, say that lines my focus point, past it, and then you'd have the, the next one sort of closer, or maybe look at the camera here, pretend like you know the 1.4 is the focus point. You'd have one of the squares sort of behind it and one of the squares in front of it, and then the, what the camera does is it generally will show the green square, which is the true point of focus once it's confirmed focus, in between the two of them. The odd part is this 35 f2, the the shorter focal length or minimum focal distance, whatever the the, the offset parallax error one is, it's skewed way way down. I don't know what the deal is. I even looked into the minimum focus distance on the specs online. This lens shows it as sorry, 11 inches and this is 13 inches. So this lens actually has the ability to focus two inches closer than this lens. So if anything, if that was the minimum focus distance for parallax error, it would be like this one should be the one that's skewed more. So I don't think that's what it's about because this can focus closer. I don't know what else what the factor can be here because they're both 35 millimeter focal length and the f-stop really should have no relevance in that so I don't understand if it's a firmware bug on the X-Pro1 and they haven't released a firmware update on this camera since uh, since the release of this so I don't know if it's maybe not so compatible yet and that could be part of the issue so what I did basically and I'm gonna kind of do some overlay photos here but I took some pictures with my iPhone into the viewfinder using the OVF 
on the X-Pro1. And this is the, and again, I'm going to pop up a picture so you guys can see this large, but this is the 1.4, and this is an autofocus mode just showing the two focus, po the, the basically the infinity focus point and then the parallax error focus point. And this is before you've actually picked focus. And uh, basically you'll see the distance, and then once you confirm focus, I'm basically showing, and again, I'll make this larger, the, the green kind of focus point. So they're kind of expected. There's not a huge gap between them, and it's sort of kind of how we expected it. What I found strange is on the, and this is what this is what I was discussing on the F2, they're skewed by quite a bit. So again, here's a photo showing just the kind of in autofocus mode where you haven't picked a focus point, and then uh, with the actual focus point confirmed. And in both of these cases, the camera, I had it on a tripod, it did not move the camera, I just changed lenses, so there's no difference, and I had the central focus point, which happens to be hitting this uh, this uh, calendar on the, on the wall here, the F, basically, for Friday. The other observation I had, going back to this other picture, is in that autofocus mode, when you just haven't done anything with the camera, and you're just kind of on standby, I've noticed the actual overall kind of the depth or not their uh, framing for the 35 f2 is or yeah is is uh larger on the ovf than the framing on the 1.4 you actually see that the lines the outer lines of the the framing are cut like basically cut off because it's kind of overlapping past the exposure meter whereas on the 1.4 it's actually smaller than that so it doesn't overlap with the exposure meter so it kind of cuts off which is another kind of strange observation. Both of them do the same thing, whereas when you actually do your focus confirmation, they shift the actual, uh, the again, the framing guide box, whatever you want to call it, for parallax error. But what it was strange is the shift on the 1.4, you see uh, right here with the you know it's now focused and locked it actually hasn't changed significantly it did shift over and I'll kind of go back and forth and AB here's without the shift you know standby and here's focus confirm where it shifts to the right a little bit and it moves over a little bit and you can kind of see that but when you see the shift in comparison between this is the F2 and standby and then here is with the focus confirmed, the box shrinks quite a bit and it shifts quite a bit more off to the right. So it's moving over what appears to be a little bit more significantly than, uh, than the F1.4. So again, this is kind of, kind of strange behavior. And with the last couple pictures I want to show you guys is uh, basically if you, if you manually focus the lens all the way down to the minimum focus distance, which again, from what I read online, is uh, it's 13 inches for the f/2. Uh, it shifts, you know, quite a ways over to the right. But then on the f/1.4, it's actually closer at one at 11 inches, so two inches less. Yet the box hasn't shifted as far over to the right. Like basically, in here, if you do the kind of, an a, I'm going to a b m for you. Here's the f/2 shifted you know, minimum focus distance, and you'll see that upper line of the top of the framing guide is in the middle of the T for Tuesday on that calendar board, or a weekly board on the back. Whereas the same minimum focus distance on the 1-4 shifted, the line's going through the Wednesday. So basically it's shifted further over to the lower right corner on the 1.2, or sorry, the, the F-2 which doesn't make sense considering that lens theoretically has the same focal distance and it actually can't focus as close as the 1.4 so you know if anyone has any ideas on what's going on here I'm thinking it may be some kind of a firmware bug maybe they're gonna release uh, an update for the X Pro one the reality is I need I need to do some take some actual shots and see like especially the minimum focus distance if that those completely shifted focus framing guidelines are really off because it does seem a little bit strange but maybe it's accurate and I don't know I don't I'm, there's I feel like there's some other optical thing I'm not following here that uh is the ex explanation for all of this cuz there's there does seem to be consistency between the parallax error 
uh, indicator or whatever focus point being shifted off to the right and the minimum focus distance shifting the parallax framing guidelines so far off to the right but I don't understand why that's possible if they're the same focal length but again there there must be something else going on here and what I did notice is even though it is shifted that that parallax or focus point when I focused with a camera on the center focus point on, on uh, with both lenses it actually focused on the exact same spot both times so you can see the green confirmation lines and again I'll go back and I'll show you these photos so here's the f1.4 and it's center focus point locked and here's the f2 with the center focus point locked and you can see it's focusing on the exact same point on on that calendar board so even though there is the you know parallax difference it focuses on the f for friday in both cases anyway the camera i was recording this with my nex 5n just overheated so while I was letting it cool down, I uh, switched lenses real quick. Uh, basically, just want to give you guys a quick view. Not if you've probably seen it before, but this is what the 35 f2 looks like on the X Pro One, and it uh, is quite a nice look. I'm looking forward to what the X Pro Two is going to bring us because I feel like this lens is a perfect match for it. Basically, the optical viewfinder path is not being as impeded. Is even the 3514 wasn't bad anyway, especially with the kind of crinkled, smashed, squared uh, lens hood. But I've noticed this lens, even with the tiny lens hood it comes with, has uh, even less of an impact on the OVF as the 14 with the lens hood. So this is really nice. It's weather sealed, and everyone is sort of assuming uh, the X Pro 2 would have weather sealing as well. So it'd be kind of a nice match. And keep in mind, I have the the original grip on this guy so this package would be smaller uh, without it but uh, it's a good match I just you know again this whole video is just about a little bit about a confusion I'm not really sure why this lens seems to have this difference parallel different parallax error when the focal length is the same because from my at least optical understanding which is probably pretty limited the field of view should be the same between two 35 millimeter lenses. I know there can be slight variances, but it seems like it's pretty significant with that parallax error square being so far off and the actual frame lines being so far off when you actually confirm focus. So uh, go ahead and drop me a comment if you have uh, any ideas what's causing this or if you maybe are on the same page as me, then maybe it's a firmware bug. But I, again, I'm going to experiment with actually taking some shots with the F2 on the X Pro One just to kind of firm up uh, if it's valid and uh, maybe I'll post some of them at the end of this video potentially as, uh, if, if I see a discrepancy if not I don't really see the point but uh, it's kind of interesting I, again I don't know how big of a deal this is anyway because this is sort of a dying camera I love it but it's it's slow and kind of you have to be really slow and careful versus the X-T1 which the autofocus is like world better than this but if you're doing like to say landscapes that kind of stuff or even even some of the photos I'll take of my kids who are pretty quick uh, if I'm careful with it I can get I can get shots I, and I was using this for you know a few years now before I got the X-T1 and uh, it works good it's just it's the contrast focus has to rack back and forth and what's weird is with this lens focus being so slow I'm so used to this super noisy f1.4 lens buzzing around as I focus on it on something and it almost made me think like the lens was broken because it wasn't doing anything but it's just because this lens is really quiet it's just strange because every time with contrast it has to go basically the full gamut of infinity and minimum and fine you know through the whole range and fine focus and it does that pretty quick but that's just always going to be inefficient and slower than the phase detect of the xt1 and even the X-T10 uh, and X-100S and X-100T because those can use that phase detect to at least get, I think it, when it, it does hybrid, so it helps it get very close to the point and then once it gets there it uses contrast to quickly kind of run through a tiny range instead of doing what this guy does. And the, you know, the X-E1 and the original X-100 where it has to rack through the entire range and you end up with slower autofocus. So. 
Anyway, I hope this uh, was interesting to you guys. Again, uh, Wing Yip, uh, I appreciate you uh, bringing that to my attention. It's interesting, if anything, but I'm wondering if there's a firmware update that they're going to need to release related to that, or maybe it's just something we're not aware of. So, thanks.